真佛佛，真呀，引领真佛，今天真你了。建设、富强、民主、文明、和谐、美丽的社会主义现代化强国，努力奋斗。Dust and smoke are rising from the vast Juroho military base. 12,000 soldiers and more than 600 aircraft and land vehicles are returning from a training exercise. In orderly columns, they present themselves for inspection by their commander in chief. Only when its army is strong can a country be truly safe. The People's Liberation Army is at a fresh starting point. Tempered in the flames of war, it is now embracing a new system of command, guided by Xi Jinping thought on strengthening the military. Built by policy, strengthened by reform, revitalized by technology, and governed by law, it is carrying out the mission for the new era entrusted to it by the party and the people. The PLA is being honed into a world-class fighting force that is capable of winning any war. China, in the new era, is confidently advancing from great to strong. It is drawing closer than ever to achieving the dream of national rejuvenation. However, in the unpredictable international environment, the path of peaceful development is a bumpy one. The world still faces a grave threat from local conflicts and their potential escalation. Great changes bring with them opportunities and also challenges. In the present situation, strengthening the PLA and consolidating the nation's defenses are strategic measures designed to support the continued development of socialism with Chinese characteristics and the realization of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Xi Jinping wrote, My greatest concern is that when the party and the people need it, will our army follow the absolute leadership of the party? Will it arrive on the battlefield, ready to win the war? 
Will its commanders be capable of taking the soldiers to war and leading them in battle? From border posts to the decks of warships, from explaining strategy to caring for ordinary soldiers. The Commander-in-Chief, Xi Jinping, is working constantly to build up the PLA's strength so that it is capable of winning the local, information-based wars of the future. Gutian County in Fujian province occupies an important place in the history of the PLA. It was here that during the Gutian Congress of 1929, the fundamental principle was established of the party's absolute leadership over the army. Henceforth, the party would be built based on ideological and the army based on political work. In the autumn of 2014, Gutian hosted the All-Army Conference on Political Work. The choice of the location that 85 years earlier had hosted the Gutian Congress was symbolic of a return by the army to its roots. The meeting would reflect on the original purpose in founding the army. Political work underpins the party's goal of strengthening the country's armed forces in the new era. It is the lifeblood of a stronger, revitalized military. The conference may have represented a return by the military to its roots, but it also marked the beginning of radical reform. By adopting a new zero-tolerance corruption policy, the PLA demonstrated its commitment to pursuing a fundamental improvement in work styles. Several high-ranking officers were subsequently investigated for corruption and punished. They included Guo Bo Xiong, Xu Tsai Ho, Fang Feng Hui, and Zhang Yang. The fresh wind that had started blowing from Gutian cleared away the clouds that had shrouded the PLA. The army was ready to be restructured and reborn. Among the northern foothills of Mount Huashan, on the banks of the Weihe River, is the base of one of the most famous units in the PLA, Number 1 Red Company under the 83rd Army Group. The company followed Mao Zedong in the Autumn Harvest Uprising of 1927. Later, during the San Wan restructuring, Mao established a party cell in the company and personally selected six new party members from its ranks. Today, the company maintains the tradition by choosing six star party members every month. It's an honor that's accompanied by the privilege of being in the army's vanguard. The San Juan restructuring pioneered the introduction of party cells at the company level in the PLA. This laid the foundation for adopting the system of the party's absolute leadership over the army. With its new structure and command system in place, the PLA had the inherent strength to march from victory to victory. Today, the world is undergoing changes on a scale not seen for a century. China is at a key stage of its progress from a big to a strong nation, and its military is also undergoing a radical transformation. In accordance with a proposal by Xi Jinping, the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee in 2013 took the decision to deepen national defense and military reform. 
Xi Jinping himself assumed the role of head of the leading group for deepening defense and military reforms. It was a resolute declaration that testified to the steadfastness, determination, and confidence with which the PLA was being reformed and strengthened. The first focus of the reforms was the system of command. Within a month, the Army General Command, Rocket Force, and Strategic Support Force were established, along with 15 new departments under the Central Military Commission. The existing seven military regions were abolished. Instead, five theater commands were established as part of a two-tier joint command system led by the Central Military Commission. A new combat command system based on the Central Military Commission, the theater commands, and army groups became one new pillar of the PLA. Another new pillar was the leadership and management system based on the Central Military Commission, army branches, and army groups. Victory is achieved by strength of unity, not numbers. Along with the reform of the scale, structure, and command system of the PLA, a joint combat force structure was adopted, centered on elite units. The number of army groups under the new Army General Command was reduced from 18 to 13. The Navy and Air Force also underwent restructuring. Along with the new Rocket Force and Strategic Support Force, a joint logistics support force was established. The number of military colleges was cut from 77 to 44, and command of the armed police force was centralized under the CPC Central Committee and the Central Military Commission. A vital part of the reforms was that of the military policy system. The policy system reform covered the exercise, development, and management of military command. By strengthening the institutional framework within the PLA, it guaranteed the military's overall development into a modern fighting force. The reform can be likened to a soldier cutting off an infected hand. Throughout the People's Liberation Army, the officers and soldiers were inspired by the reforms. Old soldiers packed their bags and marched thousands of miles to man their posts. New soldiers strove to excel. The PLA had become a true army of the people. Division commanders set an example by working harder than any of their subordinates. Many soldiers joined the new Marine Corps. They removed their old army green fatigues and replaced them with navy blues. They left the cities behind them and instead faced the wide expanse of the sea. Under the noon sun, a group of soldiers are reviewing a recent exercise. With its land, sea, and submarine capabilities, the Marine Corps is undoubtedly a powerful amphibious force. Zhuang Xiang Wei and his colleagues have just finished a three-day exercise.
Though they're exhausted, they have a lot to say regarding the various aspects of the exercise. The island landing, the island defense, and jungle combat. <laughs> Meanwhile, deep in the desert, several new combat units are making their mark. They include electronic countermeasures and special operations forces. They are deploying new organizational structures, new technologies, new tactics, and new capabilities. For the first time in Chinese military history, conventional land forces now make up less than 50% of the military. The number of non-combat personnel has been almost halved, and the officer strength has been reduced by 30%. Several new words and phrases are being heard for the first time in discussions on the military. Combined brigades, air assault brigades, aircraft carrier battle groups, paratroopers, rocket force, strategic support force, joint logistics support force. Guided by Xi Jinping thought on strengthening the military, the PLA is committed to reform and innovation. After a thousand days and nights, what has been described as the most ambitious military reform in history had achieved its aims. Revolutionary changes had transformed the PLA's organizational structure, strength, composition, and political system. Few days into the new year of 2018, Army, Naval, and Air Force personnel were on parade at a mobilization meeting organized by the Central Military Commission. This was the first comprehensive mobilization ordered by the Central Military Commission. In a speech, Xi Jinping made clear the vital importance of combat capability and war preparedness. Hao Jingwen is the deputy commander of an Air Force base and a recipient of the Golden Helmet, the highest award in the Chinese Air Force. In 2017, as a brigade commander in the East Theater Command, he led the highly symbolic first flight by the Chinese Air Force over the Tsushima Strait. Through the experience, he and his fellow pilots learned a lot about the potential demands of combat over the sea. Subsequently, in 2018, his brigade began advanced training, which included complex air combat and ground strike exercises. During more than 20 years as a pilot, Hao Jingwen has flown several generations of combat aircraft. To him, the hard part isn't getting accustomed to handling a new plane, 
it's changing his way of thinking. They have just simulated an attack on a fortified position. His partner was a young pilot called Tang Shuyao. Hao got a lock on Tang four times. In real combat, Tang would have been shot down. Tang still needs a lot of practice if he's going to be a match for the ace. However, in a ground attack, Tang demonstrates a mastery of the tactics employed by other countries' air forces. He pounces quickly and immediately breaks away. When the PLA Air Force handed out the year's Golden Dart Awards in April 2018, Tang became the youngest ever recipient. Later that year, Hao Jingwen was given another accolade, the CPC Publicity Department's Role Model of the Era Award. On December the 28th, 2018, Hao Jingwen came to the CCTV studios. His award citation noted, when the H-6K Zhanshan bombers flew through the Miyako Strait, Hao Jingwen led his brigade in escorting them, and they have formed the Zhanshan Bomber Guard ever since. From the Miyako Strait to the Tsushima Strait and beyond, his flight path has extended into ever more distant skies. Rolling steel, soaring strike planes, warships crashing through the waves. The military exercises are like a whetstone on which the iron faith, discipline, and sense of responsibility of the country's armed forces are being sharpened. They nurture the spirit, skills, courage, and morale of this revolutionary army of the new era. Zhuhai Air Show is one of the five most influential events on the international aerospace calendar. In the opening demonstration, a J-10B fighter jet perfectly executes five stalling maneuvers. The stunning performance not only reveals the plane's outstanding capabilities, it also demonstrates that China has become one of only a few countries in the world to master the technology of thrust vectoring. Technology is the leading productive force. It also constitutes the core of an army's fighting capability. However, countries are not prepared to sell their core military technologies. It took several generations of Chinese aviation engineers to reach the world's advanced level. China's independently developed third-generation fighter jet the J-10 first took to the skies in 1998. Its chief designer, Sung Wen Song, had spent 20 years working for this moment. At the celebration banquet, the old man told his assistant, Yang Wei, from now on, this date is my birthday. 20 years later, that young assistant had become the chief designer of the J-20. Today, this new Chinese-made stealth fighter jet is in active service. On the morning of April the 12th, 2018, a major naval parade was held in the South China Sea. The new look PLA Navy further inspired the nation's faith in the effort to strengthen the military and the country. 48 warships, 76 warplanes, and more than 10,000 officers and ratings were reviewed by Xi Jinping.
Over the last few years, the rate at which the PLA Navy has launched new ships has been compared to a chef adding dumplings to a pot. Large destroyers, new models of submarine and frigate, armored and amphibious landing craft, supply ships and training ships have all joined the Navy's ranks. On April the 26th, 2017, China officially launched its first aircraft carrier. A special encounter is about to take place between a soldier and his commander-in-chief. Du Fu Guo is called the hero mine clearer. After walking forward, he gives a salute with the stump of his arm. Xi Jinping then places the medal of a hero role model around his neck. In October 2018, during a mine clearance operation, Du Fu Guo and his colleagues stumbled on a hand grenade. Du immediately ordered the others to stay back while he approached the grenade alone. When it suddenly went off, Du leapt in front of his fellow soldiers to shield them from the blast and shrapnel. He saved his friends, but lost both of his hands and his sight. Senior engineer Luo Yang was in charge of testing of the J-15 shipborne fighter jet. Immediately after returning to shore on the aircraft carrier Liaoning, he suffered a heart attack brought on by exhaustion. He passed away before he could reach hospital. He was only 51 years old. On April the 27th, 2016, the J-15 being flown by test pilot Zhang Chao experienced a malfunction during a carrier landing simulation. In an effort to save the plane, Zhang missed the optimal time window to eject. He was killed. After just three more test flights, he was supposed to have carried out an actual carrier landing. Li Lei and Yang Shupeng were peacekeepers in South Sudan. On July the 10th, 2016, they lost their lives while protecting a refugee camp. Many heroes have shed their blood and given their lives for the cause of building a strong army. Through their loyalty and sense of responsibility, they have demonstrated what it means to carry out the army's mission in the new era. There's a saying that's popular in China today. We don't live in a safe era, but we do live in a safe country. The oath, the drawn sword, the purposeful march forward, the fast pace, all are elements of the strong shield that is guarding China's peace and prosperity in the new era. Fanji 强军事业新篇章
在你的怀里，我的血脉流。